Hey everyone, it's Dylan and Charlie from the Black Forest Wood Company. This week we're going to be showing you our process of creating a custom set of monkey pod chairs for our client down in Florida. And if you guys stick around till the end of the video, you're going to get to see the chair set up next to a super yacht. So this chair that you're seeing right here is not one of the chairs that we built for the client and it's not in monkey pod. Uh, this is one of the prototypes that we built in Canadian black walnut. Um, this was a three slat option and you'll notice in the video that we ended up doing five slats for the client just because we found it's more comfortable. Uh, but this is something that we always like to do before we're creating a piece for a client. Like we did this prototype here, we've done a prototype here for a stool. This is another prototype that we're working on for a different client. So we always try to customize the pieces to exactly what the client's looking for. All right, well, after months of development, we're actually ready to embark upon producing the custom uh, Samaloop inspired chairs uh, that we're gonna be producing for some customers and clients. We have all the rough parts and components ready here. It, uh, there's some are going to be out of monkey pod, our test chairs or our sample chairs or display chairs will actually be uh, made out of walnut. And uh, we're going to start, one of the first things I'm going to be doing is making my seat here. So one of the first parts that we're going to begin with is machining our seat blank on our CNC machine. These chairs, as you're going to notice, are very labor intensive. So we need to try and do whatever we can to save some labor on these chairs. And one of the easiest things that we can do is machine out the shape for the, the recess in the seat that's going to go on there. And we can also use our CNC to machine the joinery that's going to allow the legs to attach to the seat. There's a gentleman by the name of Sam Maloof who popularized a very famous style of chair joinery that we're going to be feeding featuring in these chairs. So it is the joint that's gonna fasten the leg to the seat and you'll get some close-ups on it later, but it became so popular because it's quite simple and it's extremely strong and not vulnerable to failure. Now here is where the tediousness begins to show itself. All of these chairs have to be perfectly sanded and sculpted so the different components fit together. And we also have to make sure all of the imperfections and voids are filled. So we start all the way down with 80 grit sandpaper, blending all of these machine marks left from our CNC machine. And since this is a set of six, we've got to repeat this process over six times every single time that we do it. So when I now there's lots of grinding that comes off here. Yeah. So we should be getting on these, but it's all got to get kind of smoothed out. More than, okay, where's my little router again? I'm going to come at that with this end. Or actually, that's the big one. Yeah. So. Again, just to save us some time, we're using a round over bit on a router around the edges of the seat, just so we don't have to file off all those edges completely by hand. And it just gives us a bit of a reference to go from. Now you're gonna see us get really high tech. So after using our CNC machine to machine these seat blanks, we're gonna get one of these fancy bulk barn measuring jigs, and we're gonna use that to measure the radius on the corners of these seats that we're gonna cut off. Yeah. So, you can walk up to a bandsaw and go voom. That would be easier maybe than jigsaw on it. Yeah. And this has got a pretty straight blade on it. Okay. Now with our extremely precise lines left by the bulk barn measuring jig, we can head over to the bandsaw and trim those corners off. Now we're using a pneumatic rotary machine to take out all of the small sanding imperfections and machine marks that are still left. Even after this point, we're still going to have to go over this with an orbital sander, but using a small tool like this to fine tune all of those curves is much easier than using that orbital sander or an angle grinder. And now we're going to begin working on the legs for these chairs. So we're using quite thick material as you can see because we want these chairs to be as stable as possible. And that brings me into the sponsor of this week's video, FlexiSpot. So Haley, our video editor, has a desk right now which is not very stable. So we need FlexiSpot to come in here and make Haley's life a little bit easier. So this is the Pro Plus Standing Desk E7 from FlexiSpot. The E7 is gonna be such a game changer for Haley because as you guys can imagine, she spends a lot of time sitting in front of that computer editing. What we really like about this desk is that it's super stable and it's obviously got the adjustment going up and down so that when you're working at your desk, you don't have to be fixed to any certain height. 
Something else really nice about this desk is that it comes with a 30-day risk-free return policy and a 15-year warranty. The 15 years is something that surprised me. That's something you almost never hear of. So if you guys had any hesitations on this desk, there's absolutely no reason to, and we would highly recommend you check out this piece from FlexiSpot. I haven't actually tested this yet, so hopefully it works, but I'm gonna sit on the desk. I can hear the motor definitely um, working harder, but it looks like it's having no issues. And according to FlexiSpot, this can hold up to 355 pounds. So what we had on there right there wasn't even the maximum. So we've tried a few of these sit-stand desks before, and this is definitely the best one that we've used. And I'm not just saying that because we are sponsored by them. Uh, we are gonna start offering this as a standard option for our clients who are interested in this sit-stand desk. So for any of you who are interested in a custom desk commissioned, we can offer these legs now. Uh, but then as well, if any of you want to build your own desk and you're interested in purchasing these legs, we've got a link down in the description below. You can go check it out from FlexiSpot and I would highly, highly recommend you pick one of these up. We're going to take a little bit of a downgrade here from our bulk barn measuring jig and we're going to head back over to our CNC machine. The CNC machine is going to be used to machine the radius on these leg components. So you can see on the left we have the square blanks before they went on and on the right the radius that's left by the CNC machine. So because we don't have a five axis CNC machine which can easily go to either side of the piece, it is a two stage process. So we run the top, we flip it over and then we run the bottom. Once all of the pieces are run, it's back to the pneumatic rotary machine and we're using that in combination with a file to clean up and blend all of the curves into the joinery. This is just the beginning of this process as well because after the legs have been fastened to the seat, there's gonna be more imperfections left that we're gonna to have to blend and tune. Something else I want to mention here that we bought specifically for this job is this really nice three inch sander from Merca. Typically we've been using their six inch sanders, but because this demanded for such fine uh, sanding and such tight curves, we picked up one of those and it made this whole process so much easier. Then we're taking a router to any of the exposed edges on the legs before we fit them together just so we can save ourselves some time after. So you can see the shoulder that's left by the cutter on our CNC machine. We did in fact have a custom cutter made specifically for this joint. And then there's a matching groove on the leg that can slide right into there. We're using Type Bond 3 as an adhesive here to secure the legs in place. And on the outside of this joint, there's two holes left that you can see right there that we're gonna secure two wood screws into and then we plug those up with dowels afterwards. Once the glue on the back legs has dried, we can take everything out of the clamps and begin putting the front legs on. One thing I should mention is that we're using Type Bond 3 as opposed to Type Bond 2 because it's rated for exterior use. If these were interior chairs, we probably would have used Type Bond 2 just because of the quicker curing time. But being that these are going to be in an exterior environment, we want the absolute best adhesive. Once all that is cured, it's back to the sanders and grinders to start cleaning up our glue lines. There you can see the imperfections I mentioned earlier. So although all of these components are machined with our CNC machine, it still leaves some shoulders and some glue lines that we have to go back and tune up before we can apply our oil. One thing that was difficult on these chairs as well is you'd think you'd have everything cleaned up, but then you'd go put the oil on and it would show all these spots where there was still glue left and we'd have to go back and sand more. So very time consuming. Once all of our legs and the seat have been sanded and fit, we can begin working on the headrest for the chair and the back slats. So like the rest of the chair, the headrest is machined on the CNC machine and also constructed from solid monkey pod. And then once it's off the machine, we just use a flush trim bit on the router to release it from the blank. And then it's over to our router table with a round over bit, just again to save us time instead of having to file down all these round corners. And 
Similar to the joinery on the legs to attach to the seat, we're also using screws to fasten the top of the legs into the backrest and then securing that in place with wood screws, which will then plug with monkey pod dowels later. After the headrest has been glued on, Garrett's just taking a pole saw here to trim off that excess by hand. He's using some wood filler to fill in any imperfections from our joinery and then back to that pneumatic routery tool to blend all of these curves together. We essentially are going for one even radius across the top, so we have to trim back all those high points. And like I mentioned, this was incredibly tedious because as soon as you'd finish one, you would have five more to go and do. Fortunately though, especially Garrett said he loved this process. Uh, it was quite calming and relaxing for him, so it's good to know that we have employees that are never gonna get sick of this. And here are the plugs that I've mentioned a few times in this video. So we have a special plug cutter bit that we put in our drill press, and then you can just use a chisel to pop all of those out quite easily. And then from there, we can go along and fill in all of those screw holes that are left in our chairs. And now we can begin working on the back slats for the chairs. So we unfortunately didn't get to film our laminating process because Brad did that on a Sunday while no one was here, but it's solid monkey pod plies that have been vacuum pressed on a form to give us the specific shape for the curvature of someone's spine. So this is something that took us a few tries to get perfect as well because the first try that we did with these slats, uh, they weren't making perfect contact with the person's spine when they were sitting in there. So luckily on the second round, we got it better and quite a bit more comfortable, but it's the kind of thing that depending on the individual, if you had someone really tall or really short, you might have to tweak this curve to get the maximum comfort. And then to sand the faces of these pieces, we made kind of a, a custom jig here on our spindle sander. So we just clamped a piece of MDF uh, to the exact thickness away from the spindle, and then we send those slats through and it just does a nice job of cleaning up that face. And now we have quite a custom setup on our palm router. So we've got a solid wood bushing in there for zero clearance that allows us to get the piece of wood right up close to that bit. And it just lets us put a nice little round over on all the edges of these slats so then we don't have to do it by hand. And again, lots of time and care is taken for these chairs in order to make sure that the slats will fit perfectly into the seat. Once we've got them all fitting perfectly, we can then go ahead and oil all the slats individually. We'd like to oil these separate from the chairs because then we can ensure that oil is going to get the full length of these slats. Whereas if we installed them first and then oiled them, there would be little sections on either end that might not get oil. And then as the wood expands and contracts, there's a chance that you might see that unfinished edge. Something else that I think would be fun is for you guys to guess the price that we sold these chairs for. I think you're getting a good idea of how labor intensive this whole process is. So leave a comment below, guess the price for one chair, and whoever ends up guessing it right, we will we'll send you something. I haven't decided yet, but we will send you something for free. So leave those comments below and we'll let you know if you got it. And then once we finished oiling the slats, we're covering them all in painter's tape to protect them while we finish the assembly on the rest of the chair. Like I mentioned, we're doing this all before the rest of that assembly is finished so that we can ensure we get proper coverage over the whole slat. Then we can carefully get them fit into the seat. We can fit our headrest in place and apply the glue that's needed. And then like I mentioned earlier, this headrest is gonna get screwed into place and glued and then we'll come along with some monkey pod plugs to clean up those holes. Since the legs were CNC machined, we've got these large chunks that are left on the end from where we were grabbing on uh, to the pods. So we trim those off by hand and then we are having to be quite careful about this process because clearly it's going to be important that all the chair legs are the same length but with a careful hand it's pretty simple to get that done. Now finally after hours and hours and hours of sculpting and sanding and gluing and fitting we're to the satisfying point of applying the exterior grade oil finish to these chairs. So 
mentioning the oil finish because I know people are going to ask, we for a while have been testing our own exterior grade oil finish and we're still not quite at a point where we're 100% happy with it. Uh, we know we're going to get there but we're not quite there yet. So for a recommendation on what you guys should use if you want an exterior grade oil finish, uh, for many years before we started testing our own, we used the oil finish from Osmo. It's their 420 is the code. It's called their UV oil and it works great. So if you guys are looking for something to use in an exterior application, I would recommend that. We do happen to sell it as well, so you can check out our website if you want to pick some of that up. Um, but for a project like this that's solid wood, that would be your go-to oil. Now, if you've been watching us for a while, you've seen us add larger brands to our tables. So we had these smaller brands made for smaller pieces. So they're solid pewter and we've just done a nice little inlay that they fit into on the bottom of the chair. Now this client also ordered two matching monkey pod tables to go with them. So we're finishing them with the same exterior oil that we used in the previous clips. And in a few seconds, you're gonna to get to see them set up next to his super yacht. We've also got a few more solid wood projects coming up soon. So let us know if you like this style of project and we'll be sure to include more of them. And here's a look at the chairs and the tables that our client ordered at his gorgeous home down in Florida. And obviously a look at his incredible yacht that he owns. So huge thank you to our client for trusting us and huge thank you to all of you who've stuck around to the end of this video and we'll see you next week. Cheers!